Let's go before the world. It's going to be a short one. And then we're going to see where, how God takes us into the enjoyment. Father, Lord, we give you praise. Father, Lord, we bless you. We are here, oh, Father God, to receive spiritual food that will enable us, oh, Father God, to do that which you have called us to be, which is to be vessels of honor. That's all we want to be, Lord. And a vessel of honor is not unto itself, it's unto you, Lord, for your service. So, Lord, minister to each and every one of us. Bless us, strengthen us, speak to us, Lord. Change us on the inside. Gain us for yourself. Father, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people say, Amen. as you can see, we are anointed to pray. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. I don't know if you can see, oh, you can see, because I don't, if you see the man there, and I, I don't know why, okay, there's a, there are some sisters here, you can see they're praying as well. You can see the anointing, that's the oil coming upon them, and you can see that it's always related to the word of God, praise the Lord. I think this, this series, if, you can, if we can all internalize it, it will change our paradigm, amen. One of the things that's fast become apparent is the fact that there, are, there is a lot of bad theology. What did I say? There's a lot of bad theology. And bad theology creates fear and doubt in the hearts of the people. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And so if you have a misunderstanding of the word of God, of God and what his precepts are and his insights are, then there's likely to be a lot of doubt and fear. And so there are people, and I know people, even men of God who have served, that as they began to look at their lives, they begin to even doubt their own salvation because of the bad theology. And I pray that God is going to give us a theology concerning prayer that will be uplifting, amen, that will be genuine, amen, that will release us into what God has called us into, amen. I'm not, I'm not saying you shouldn't seek out a pastor or a man of God or a woman of God to pray for you. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. In fact, Paul James will talk about it. If anybody is sick, let him seek out the elders. But there is a place that where you have to understand that what it means to be a born-again Christian, you have been called, you have been anointed to pray. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. Amen. Because it's not always going to be the time that you, you are in a situation that the man of God will be available. You call his number and he's engaged. What do you do? Praise the Lord, somebody. You should get on your knees or stand up where and take control. Amen. Okay. Because this, that word says you are anointed to what? Pray. To pray. What is prayer? If you've ever been to any of our classes, one of the definitions that we give is that we will say that prayer is the communication with the Father through the Son by the power of the Holy Ghost. If you don't know that already, write that down. Very valid and it's important to hold on to that. But one of the things I want to do is to bring you into an enjoyment of really the power behind that statement. Prayer is communication with the Father, through the Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, when you look at um, the website for Billy Graham's Evangelistic Association, they say prayer is spiritual communication, that word again, between man and God, a two-way relationship in which man should not only talk to God, but also listen to God. Praise the Lord. And so listen, it's not about us just quickly getting our two pence in there. Lord, I woke up in the morning before I feel bad about not praying, so I quickly do a quick five minutes. In fact, you can even make it 30 minutes and, or maybe an hour, but after that you just dash up. No, 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 no. It's communication, right? Is it possible that after you have downloaded onto God, God too wants to download? prayer, you are anointed to pray. You do know that the unbelieving person who has refused to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, even if they think they are praying, but because they have not believed into Christ, there's no way they're going to get a download from heaven. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. And so prayer to God is like a child's conversation with his father. 
When my daughter comes to me, if I, you know, I was telling my wife yeah, yesterday, and she, she kind of slightly adjusted me that, listen, look at it, look at it through the and eyes of a parent. And that's the truth, because our children will come to us and ask us for things. They don't know how you get it. They don't know if you don't have it. They just want it. Amen. And that's how it's a relationship. And so there's an expectancy. So it's not that you say, give me, give me, give me, and she's now walking away. No, she's waiting. What's the answer? Show me the money. And so really what we're saying about, we're talking about is that whenever you're communicating to God, don't misunderstand what I've just said now, because it's not about all altruistic or what we want about ourselves, but it's about communicating because God wants to download his will to us. Amen. In fact, things like, scriptures like Luke chapter 11, verse 13 come to mind. It says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly what? Father. Note that, heavenly Father. Not heavenly God, even though he is God, but he is heavenly Father. There's an endearment. Amen give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask. And the truth about it is this. Is it possible that when we're asking God for things, he is actually answering us? But because we are asking for physical things, and we said about this a couple of weeks ago that these things are spiritually what? Discerned. That we're not understanding the answer that God is giving us. Amen. Because he is a good father who will give you the spirit. If you go on to Christianity.com, they define prayer as doxology, praise, thanksgiving, confession, supplication, and intercession to God. So what is prayer on, in the, on the Christianity.com's definition? Doxology, exhortation. Ascribing that exhortation to God. You know, when we worship God earlier, and, and Sister Margot was just worshiping God. It's all doxology, praise, giving thanks, confessing, supplication, asking for specific things, and interceding, praying for others. And it's all directed towards God. That is prayer. No wonder in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, he says, Therefore, I exalt first that all... Of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that they may lead, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. It is important that we understand that prayer goes beyond just us asking for our individual needs, but there's more to it. There's doxology, where you just say, Lord, at this point in time, I'm not even going to ask you for nothing, but I just want to consider what the word says and begin to repeat it back to you. The God who's high and mighty, the loftiest God, the God who is not created, and he, no one, he's created, that no one can, can create him, and he's outside of creation, but he created all things. That same God now became a man to dwell with. What a wonderful God this God is. The God who saw me in my brokenness and has paid the price for my victory. The same God who opened up the Red Sea just by the nostril blowing of his nostril, and the Red Sea had to pass. What will he not do for me? That is the God who I worship. That's the God who I ascribe. That's the God I love. And Lord Jesus, all I want to say is, I love you. Thanking him for what he's done. Oftentimes, we, we just want, 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 and we don't even remember what he did yesterday. Confessing that, Lord, sometimes... All we need to do is to confess, Lord, I'm in pain. You, listen, I understand there's a need to not confess negative. But when you're confessing to your God, creator, what are you hiding? If you are in pain, tell the Lord Jesus, I am in pain. 
I don't know how to deal with this, but I know there's a grace. Oh, so I need that grace to mend me. Do you remember that song that said, one of the verses that, that the broken-hearted ones have come to praise him? Praise the Lord. There's no, there's no glossing over the situation. Praise the Lord. And so if you are broken-hearted, go to him and say, Lord Jesus, I am not happy. I am feeling down. But I know there's something in you that can lift me up. And that's why I'm here, Lord. Hear my cry as I climb to you. The enemies are battling left, right, and side. And I'm about to die, Lord. But only you can save me, Lord. I need you, Jesus. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. So when you look at the word communication... That word in the dictionary means the imparting or interchange of thoughts, opinion, information by speech, writing, or by sign. Oh, I wish that the church would get to a place where they can just... Listen, if you ever see a Jewish person, when they are frustrated, they don't even say anything. Have you ever seen those where they begin to hit their heads like this, out of anger, beat their chest like this? And they say, Lord, I need you. They haven't said much, but they've said a lot. You remember Anna? Anna, when she was under the oppression in her own home. Somebody said to me that to me last Sunday. That Anna was in her own home, but the own, that house was an oppressive house because of everything that was going out there. Ah, she was in pain. She went to the temple. She could not form the words. Where would she start? Is it the day one or day two or the one that just happened before she left? But she just began to open her mouth. And the priest said, are you drunk? Ah, if only you knew what is here. Somebody, your prayer, God hears your prayer. Because you are anointed to pray. You are what? Anointed to pray. Second Chronicles chapter 7, 14 will say, if my people who are called by my name, listen, what it means to be a born again Christian is that you bear the, ma- the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. And so the Bible says, if you call upon God because you bear his name, he said, if you will humble yourself, change your position, change your posture, and pray. Why is it that we just can't just pray? Pride is one of those things that stops us from praying. And why, I mean, how does the enemy get to a place where he puts pride in us that we say, no, I won't pray to God? Not that we will ever say we won't pray to God, but something on the inside of us feels that praying to God is the last thing we should do. That is pride. Can we talk today? The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. That means you're not just saying, okay, God, well, if you're going to do it, do it. No, no, no. God, I need you to do it. I am here, Lord. I, I don't even have time for food. Food is not what we're talking about now. I need you, Lord. Listen, can I talk to you about fasting and praying very quickly because we'll talk about it next week. Fasting is just about you starving yourself. It's a more of a fact that at that point in time, food is not the priority. Who knows what I'm talking about? I just want to behold the face of my God. Food. I will get food later, but now it's me and God. Speak to me, Lord. Move on my behalf, Lord. Show me what I'm missing concerning this thing. That is the essence of fasting. Praise the Lord, somebody. He said, and turn from their wicked ways. God said, I will hear from heaven. For you to go to heaven is because you bear his name and there is an open heaven over you. And I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Listen, you know, you know that you need healing. Pray to God. God said, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. That's the word of the Lord to us. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. You see, in that scripture, there is only one thing that qualified the people to get the attention of God's hearing and eyesight. What? Because they bear his name. Somebody say, I'm anointed to pray. 
Another definition of this whole issue of prayer, it talks about in that same dictionary, dictionary.com, you'll say, communication is a passage or an opportunity or means of passage between two places. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know if anybody's loving this one, even though it's a dictionary definition. But he says, prayer is a passage, a corridor. A corridor, somebody. Communication is a corridor. Praise the Lord. For you who are on earth, hallelujah, to enter into the heavenlies while you're still on earth. It is by your prayer. Oh, some of you also get excited about that. Talking about the tabernacle, if you know the structure of the tabernacle, you have the outer court. It's all part of the tabernacle. If you've ever been to Israel, those are one of the places that we go. In fact, we always go there on the Friday while we're there. Listen, by the way, Pastor David is going to give us information later on at some point when you can join us for next year for going to Israel if you're interested. But on the Friday, whenever we're there, we always make sure we go to uh, the, the wall. Uh, I know some people call it the Wailing Wall, but we call it the, it's, the, it's actually the, on the outer court of, of the tabernacle. And one of the things that is that, that uh, when you come into the outer court, then you go into the structure itself, the tabernacle itself. Then when you come into the, the curtain or the entrance, you come into a room which is larger than a smaller room that is further in. And that room is called the holy place. So you have come from the outer court, which is still part of the tabernacle, and you come into the holy place. But after that is a smaller room that only one person in those days could go in there, which is the chief high priest. It's called the holy of holies. Amen. Now you've got to understand the outer court is earthly. Amen. The reason why only one person can go into the holy of holies is because it is considered as heavenly as you're going to get on earth. Amen. You might as well call it heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so the interface between the earthly and the heavenly is the holy place. Praise the Lord. That is a place of, that's the corridor of prayer to get into the heavenlies. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. And so I need you to know, because you are anointed, you have the ability to pray. Because that prayer is the corridor, the passage between the communication between the earthly and the heavenly. Praise the Lord, somebody. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. That's why in Psalm 100, it will say, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him. Bless his name. Remember what that means. Prayer moves the person who is on the earth into the realm of the what? Okay, yes, I like that. Or heavenly in this case. Earthly, heavenly. Natural, spiritual. Temporal, eternal. Hallelujah. But hey, prayer moves us from one place into the next place. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. Now, this is the deal. Oftentimes, the psalmist, and really, you know we're going through the book of Psalms now, and I just really love how God is just regulating us, and now we begin to understand, ah, oh, so this is why God is allowing us to do this and do that. Think about it. Whenever you move from the earthly into the heavenly, or the temporal into the eternal, or the natural into the spiritual, is because there has been a change of environment. Hallelujah. And how are you going to enjoy God? It's because there has to be a change of environment. And prayer is your corridor into that change of environment. Praise the Lord, somebody. And so if we agree, somebody say, I'm anointed to pray. If we agree that prayer is communication with God by way of interchange of thoughts or via a passage, we must agree that prayer is vital to the Christian world. Who agrees with me that prayer is vital to the Christian world? If that's you, say I. Wow, I was expecting to hear everybody say I. Who, if that's you, say I. 
Okay, praise the Lord. So if we go back to our foundation scripture, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to make something and uh, bring us into the general. So let's read that Ephesians chapter. We, we would agree that prayer is vital. Let me, show, let me prove it to you. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, how many of you know? Just out of interest, shout out to me if you know the answer. How many chapters in the book of Ephesians? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so the last chapter is the end of the book, right? Okay, brilliant. And so the tail end of that chapter, it says, which means the tail end of the book, amen, is saying that praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. This is a statement found at the tail end of this book. Praise the Lord, somebody. This book, among scholars, is called one of the most heavenly, exalted books. If you ever enter into the import of what you will blow your mind. But guess what? It ends by saying we should be prayerful. Amen. Listen, in chapter 1, it will tell us that we are blessed because God be blessed, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And then much more. He had chose you, predestined you. But guess how this book ends? It says, pray. Amen. Somebody say, I'm anointed to pray. Listen, with all the blessings that are open to you, with all the heavens open to you, guess what? Your staff is in the area of prayer. My wife is always fond of saying that prayer is the staff of the Christian. That's what you lean on. Amen. Chapter 2. It will give us revelation of who we are. He talks about the fact that we are the body, we are the new man, we are the house, we are the family of God. In fact, in verse 10 of 7, he says, For we are God, we are, he is workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. But when you come to the tail end of the, that passage of that book, what does it say? He says, Pray. Hallelujah, somebody. In chapter 3, it will tell us the mystery of what was locked up in us. When you read verses um, 9 onwards, it will talk about the fact that the, from the beginning of the age, God has hidden, um, uh, hidden in us, from, hidden from all creation through Christ to the intent, verse 10, that now the manifold wisdom is being unfolded, unfolded, realized, shown to the world, his wisdom by, to be known through the church to all principalities and powers. But with all of that, the book finishes with what? Praying. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm telling you, prayer is what is, is going gonna, is gonna to make the difference. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. In fact, in, the, in chapter 5, we will talk about the fact that we are to imitate God. No, not imitate God. Walk in love, yeah, love, walk in love, walk in light, walk in wisdom, imitate God. Husband, love the fire. Your wives, are, and wives submit to your husband. Listen, at the end of the book, it says, pray. What am I trying to get out? Prayer is a key thing for every believer. You cannot mess around with prayer. Praise the Lord. And so when your cell group is calling a prayer, please turn up. When your team leader is calling a prayer, please turn up. Oh, please, when we call prayer on Fridays, please turn up. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. The reason why we're saying turn up is because we know you are anointed to pray. Now, let me show you, let's read the scripture together and I'll open it up and then we're going to dive into the enjoyments going forward. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14, it says, But their minds were being blinded, for unto this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. Remember, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago that if you're reasoning things out, it's because you're in the natural. And the soulish mind does not like to pray because the soulish mind wants to reason it out. 
can God do this? In fact, let me tell you what, let me say how bad it goes. A soulish mind will look at themselves that color. You know you sinned. You told a lie. This could be the repercussion of the lie you told. That's so. That's your soulish reason you out of the blessings of God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And so such a person, rather than praying to God, saying, let's just leave this one. I suppose uh, the next one we'll try and make sure we don't fall foul of the next one. That's the soulish mind. The soulish mind is always trying to blind us from the reality. But when you get Christ, the veil is taken away and you are able to see that which is spiritual because it can only be spiritually what? Discerned. And so you know that this one, we need to pray. This one, we will pray. This one, we must pray. Why? Because we are anointed to pray. You see, the blindness in the life of a soulish man is supernatural. They didn't blind themselves. The devil has blinded them. Even though they are born again Christians, but because they operate from the soulish side, not the spiritual side, there is a blind, there's a veil. However, enlightenment is the enjoyment of the spiritual mind. Amen. Because they have the light of Christ that has taken away the veil. Praise the Lord. And so what it means to be born again is to be spiritual. You remember John 3, 6? That which is born of the Spirit is... Have you noticed where it says, born of the Spirit? Big S. Somebody say big S. Is Spirit. Little S. Amen. Try to figure out which one is you. Yeah, little S. And so who is... Yes. And so what that means is that we are not born of natural things. We are born of the Spirit. That's why we can say, our Father. Praise the Lord. That's why I say you are anointed to what? Pray. That's what it means. to The true born again can pray and have God answer. So, let's go to this one and see how we can go through this one. Exodus, so now remember what I said. Spiritual discernment in the area of prayer. Exodus chapter 30, verse 22 to 25. It says, Moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses, say, Also take for yourself quality spices. What spices? Quality spices. That which you are anointed with is quality. Amen. It cannot be erased. It will not go off. Cannot be corrupted. Cannot decay. That's why I say you are anointed to pray. He says, moreover, says the Lord spoke, moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, also take for yourself quality spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much sweet-smelling cinnamon, 250 shekels. 250 shekels of sweet-smelling cane, or some of your verses will say calamus. 24 will say, in verse 24, 500 shekels of acacia, according to the shekels of the sanctuary. That means the money in the sanctuary. And a hin of olive oil. A hin of olive oil is a unit of olive oil that you're going to put these things into. He said, and you shall make from these a holy anointing oil, an ointment compounded according to the art of the perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. So the holy anointing oil is more than just the oil, the olive oil. Amen. This olive oil has something that has been soaked into it. And what has been soaked into it is liquid myrrh. Those of you who know about myrrh, you know that that was a part, some of the things that were used in the 
treating of the death of, death of Christ. Amen. So myrrh in there talks about death of Christ. Hallelujah. The reason why we are anointed for everything that we do is because Christ himself took the pain, died on the cross, and in his death, everything about us died too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so I need you to know the reason why I'm saying that you are anointed to pray is because there's something on the inside of you that has accomplished and conquered death. Hallelujah. Then it says, sweet smelling cinnamon. Something that smells gives off, right? In fact, it actually has to give itself off to smell. And so in that death, there is a power of the death of Christ that gives us the power of that which has died. Hallelujah. We'll talk about more later on. Then he talks about sweet-smelling calamus. That calamus is like a king that has a very nice smell to it. And that talks about the life-releasing power of the one who died. But did he stay dead? Remember that song earlier? But he came alive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am telling you, brothers and sisters, you are anointed to pray. Because the things that would have kept you away from God, Christ has died for it. In that same thing, Romans chapter 6, verse 4, tells us about that we too were baptized in his death. Hallelujah. And so when Christ died, you died. Hallelujah. But now he rose up and you are alive. That's why you can bring your prayers to God and he will answer them. Somebody say, I'm anointed to pray. The acacia wood as well represents the power of resurrection. All soaked in. And the Bible says that all of this is put into the hint of oil to become an anointing oil. What do you do with anointing? In fact, when you look at the word of anointing or to anoint and to anoint, the word anoint in, is to what? You got it. It's a smear. Oftentimes we just look at anointing, bring your head. No, rub the thing in. In fact, another word is to paint. Praise hallelujah. Can you imagine if only you saw what the Holy Spirit was doing for you and he's doing to you, you right now. He's putting his hand, no, you, know, you know, I'm being comical now, so please don't take, but take a brush and he's just painting you all over. Not just all over, but on the inside too. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm anointed to pray. How will such a person who has been painted all over and inside and out, underneath the armpit and everything, come before God and answer not prayer? And prayers not answered. You are anointed to pray. Seriously, at home, moms, don't wait till you get to pastor. Just get on your knee and pray. Because you are anointed to pray. You are anointed to pray. Let me tell you how this really works. In your own time, go read the, uh, chapters 25 all the way to chapter 30. You will see all the utensils ranging from the curtains, the table, the showbread, um, the candles and everything that God said make, they should make. But come and look at what it says in chapter 30, verses 10, 25 on, onwards. And I'm going to read it. It says, and you, and, and it says, and you shall make this these a holy anointed oil and untoint compounded according to the art of the perfumer. I've said that. It shall be a holy anointing oil. With it, somebody say with it. You shall anoint the tabernacle of meeting. That means the house is anointed. Amen. The ark of the testimony, the ark that was in the tabernacle was anointed. That means they, they smeared the thing with anointing oil. The table of showbread where the table in that room was anointed with oil. The utensils that were on the table, the lampstand and everything that was used to, 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 keep, on, to keep the lampstand running was anointed. The altar of incense, the place where we put the incense in that tabernacle was anointed. The altar of burning of offering, the burning offerings out in the altar court, it had to be anointed with the, and all its utensils, the labor and its base, even the base... On, had to be anointed. And say, so you shall consecrate. Whenever you anoint something, it is consecrated. Amen. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. That means because you are anointed to pray because you are God's property. 
Praise the Lord, somebody. They shall be what? Most holy. The reason you are anointed is because you are most holy to God. Praise the Lord, somebody. Whatever touches them must be holy. Praise the Lord. Verse 30 says, You shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister to me. What does that minister mean? To serve, right? What is it? Listen, think about it. Even if I even haven't, haven't gone to Bible school, what is the work of the priest in the house of God? Pray. Isn't it? I mean, isn't, do you think he's just carrying those incense and just singing to humming to himself? No. As he's carrying, he's praying for the nation. He's praying for the king. He's praying for his fellow workers. He's praying for the high priest for the day the high priest will have to come through into that room and go to, into, the, uh, into the Holy of Holies that he will come. He's praying. Praise the Lord. Do you remember the book of Psalms? It talks about the fact that our prayers are like incense. Hallelujah. Unto the Lord. He's praying. He's praying. He's praying. And so I need you to know, in those days, there was a person required. But in this day, all of us have been grafted into the work of minister. Hallelujah. We are anointed to pray. And so your worship, anointed. Your prayer, anointed. Verse 31 says, And you shall speak to the children of Israel, that this shall be a holy anointing oil to me throughout your generations. So what am I saying? Whatever and whoever is anointed, they are anointed for the service of God. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. I need you to do. So your prayer now, can you begin to see that your prayer is going to be beyond just, Lord, give me that house. Lord, heal me. It's included, but there's a bigger purpose to your prayer. Amen. Because you are most holy to God. Your life is a service to God. And so as a minister, you are meant to pray to God so that you can be about his interests, desire, concern, and intentions. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 6, it says, You shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, these are the words you, you shall speak to the children of Israel. God says, new wine, you are a kingdom of priests. What do priests do? They pray. <laughs> if you are not a praying believer, repent today. Amen. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. Because you were anointed to pray. Praise the Lord somebody. When you come to First Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, which says, you are a chosen generation, somebody. Chosen. Why? So that you can pray, be a priest. A royal priesthood, he calls you. A holy nation separated unto God. Why? Because he has anointed. The anointing separates you from the world. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. Yes, we were in darkness, but now we are in light. Hallelujah. And so it is important that you understand this. Do you remember the story that Jesus told about the persistent woman who prayed? In Luke chapter 18, before he gives that parable, he will say that men always ought to and yes, not lose heart or not to faint. Men always ought to pray. Let me tell you the parable, and I want you to enjoy this. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. And it might be just where we're going to close. In the Old Testament, in especially in the book of Deuteronomy, there was provisions for the, less mag for the marginalized in society. And so you will hear about the fact that if you plant corn on the road or wheat, you have to glean, and uh, you should allow the edges to be gleaned or fall. So if you cut and something falls, don't pick it up, just leave it. God has proposed that for somebody who doesn't have to walk past and carry some so they can, at least even if all they get is half a cup, at least they will have something to eat. You're taking like bags and bags home, but let somebody take half a cup home to eat. That is God's provision. 
But also, there were other provisions that how you treat the widows, the fatherless, and the strangers. Not just in terms of food, but other things. So there are provisions in there. It is into that that Jesus is talking to when he talks about the persistent widow. He says, there's a certain, in a certain city, a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city where the judge does not fear God and does not regard man. And she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. She came praying, right? She came praying, right? And he said he would not for a while. But afterwards, he said to himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Lest she continually coming, she weary me. Then Jesus said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out just in the morning? Just in the night time? Just whenever? Who cry out day and night to him? Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? And it's a shame. It's an indictment of the church. Again, remember what I said. I am not saying don't go looking for prayer. But I'm saying you are anointed to pray. The day you realize that, number one, you deliver yourself for putting yourself or your family in any harm's way, but then you enter into the enjoyment of that which you will be anointed to do. Amen. Because the story goes like this. Jesus told them a story. They knew what he was talking about. Because in those days, even though the judge was meant to be impartial, if I was a man who had money, I could just give the judge money and he will rule in my favor, even though I am the one in the wrong. Okay? Now, in that part of the world, it is a shame. Just like for some of us who were grown, mom would say, ah, you should be ashamed of yourself. For what, you, we don't talk about shame nowadays, but we don't tell our children. But when I was growing up, they said, listen, you wore that out, you should be ashamed of yourself. You did that, you should be ashamed of yourself. Is that your handwriting or what? You should be. Because what they're saying is that there is something more about you by which you ought to operate. Who understands the way when I'm talking about this? But this, yeah, praise the Lord. But this man says, listen, I have no shame. You can call me an unjust rule. Go and read in Strong's where he talks about I do not regard my, he says, I have no shame. I don't care what they say about me. I'm going to make no money. I'm going to say what I say and what I say stands. I have no shame. He said, I don't fear God. But what changed this man's heart? The woman came. You see, when he talks about, let me say what it is. If you got Strong's, you're gonna go. You are gonna love this par parable when you go back and read it in Strong's. He says, because this widow, at least she continually wearing me out. You see, if you've ever seen those um, documentaries on news where you see people in the Middle East when they are unhappy, women, they will be shouting, they will be jumping, hitting their head, jumping on the floor, hitting their head, jumping on the floor, crying banging himself on the floor. This man, first day, second day, after three days, the guy is having a headache. He can't rest. And he knows that she's coming back tomorrow. So he said, you know what? He said, me keep on getting this bagging on the eye. In fact, the word worry means to hit in the eye. If you look at strong, you'll love it. You'll really say, wow, it's amazing. He said, instead of this woman hitting me in the eye, continue, let me just deliver her and I get my rest. What is it? The woman knew her right. That there was provision. That the judge has to look out for her interests. I'm telling you, that is according to the 
Israel after the flesh. You are Israel according to the spirit. You have an anointing. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2 that the anointing that you have causes you to know all things. You know you can pray. You know you know the will of God. And the Bible says when you call out a thing in his will, he shall do it. Somebody say, I'm anointed to pray. And so don't let anything in life kind of cheat you out of your anointing. You are the, the same way this widow will say, I know my right. You are a judge. You are an unjust God. You have no shame concerning man. But you know what? I will stand my ground and I'm going to plead my case and you, I'm coming back tomorrow. And that's the way we've got Jesus said, listen, pray day and night. I will revenge. I will avenge. What God is not looking for is those who say, oh, prayer meeting, once a year, I'll be there. No, God said, come on. Who do you think I am? I need you to know that you are with me because I have anointed you every day, every, every day. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Somebody, you are anointed to pray. You are anointed to pray. Father, we give you praise. So right now, I want you to stand up, clear your truth. If you feel that you stretch your legs, you know, do, do this Stretch them out like this one, because you are going to pray. <laughs> What's the need of talking about prayer and not praying? Stretch your legs, get ready. Can I have somebody on the keyboard, please? And while you're praying, you're praying too. Because we all have issues to pray into. The Bible says we are anointed to pray. Somebody say, I am anointed to pray. I am anointed to pray. So the first prayer point today, Lord, open my eyes. Open my spirit to the anointing that's already inside of me. Lord, evoke, provoke the spirit of prayer in me. The days of prayerlessness are over. That's the plan of the evil one. When I reason things out, is the enemy trying to say, well, don't worry about that, come back next. No, 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 Lord. Night and day, I will commune with you. God is, God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. So tonight, Lord, we're going to, this afternoon, we're going to pray. Lord, invoke in me the spirit that recognizes that I am anointed to pray. If the priests in the, in the tabernacle are there to serve you in the area of prayer, Lord, my life is to serve you right now in the area of prayer. I will pray your will. No wonder Jesus said, our father. Not, God does not need to go look for another child. I am his child. He is my father. I am going to hallow his name as I pray. Come on, begin to pray right now. Begin to hallow the name of God. Begin to lift up the name of God. Begin to big up the name of God. You know in the world we will say you are the man. Now stop that and we can say Lord God Almighty you are God Almighty you are great, you are awesome, you are glorious you are majestic, you are to be honored, you are to be revered, you are to be loved, you are to be magnified and so Lord I use my own mouth, I, use, I stand up my own feet and I declare Lord Jesus your name is higher than every other name. Lord Jesus I bless you and I honor you. Lord Jesus, I magnify you. Lord Jesus, I worship you. Lord Jesus, I declare there is none like you, O Lord. Glory be to your name, O Lord. Glory be to your name, O Lord. We are to magnify you. Hallowed be your name. Your name is to be hallowed. Your name is to revere. And so I declare my lifestyle. I will revere your name. I will hallow your name. I will honor your name. I will bear your business your name Lord Jesus that name in my mouth will mean more than it's ever meant to Father God the name our Father will carry everything will be preeminence in the name of Jesus at the name at the thought of my Father I will be bowed I will bow I will revere I will honor you Lord I will no longer bring disgrace to your name. Lord, I will never, the days of insulting your glory are over. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Jesus will teach us in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9, honor. He says, in this, on, in this manner, this template, pray, our Father, who art in heaven. Listen, to be a born-again Christian, 
And not to pray to your father is to disgrace and honor and to disgrace and to disregard the glory of your father. You know what that means? You wake up in the morning, you look at him, you walk away. In fact, in some places, it's bad. You don't even look at him, you just walk out. And he's meant to be your father. How many of us would like that? That your child wakes up in the morning, they saw you in the city room, they saw you in the corridor, and they just brushed past you. He, ah, come on. That's what it means to be a born again Christian and not to pray. It's to dishonor the glory of your father. That will not be our posture. Come on, begin to pray. Lord, I will never come to a place where I dishonor the glory of my father. I will acknowledge my father. I will pray to my father. I will revere my father. I will love on my father. The father who loves me. The father who paid the price for me. The father who drew me to himself. Lord, I receive the grace of Father God to walk in the anointing to pray. In the anointing to seek you in the morning. Early in the morning, oh Father God, I will seek your face, oh God. Late at night, I will speak unto you, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, tonight night this morning we declare the Lord your name to be hallowed in the name of Jesus he says your kingdom come your kingdom come you do realize that's the reason why he saved me and you the Bible says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and what will happen God is saying listen in this kingdom there is a mutual benefit, mutual fellowship. But God says, my way first. My way first. If you look at the prayer that Jesus prayed, he first hallowed the name of the Father. He said, it's all about your kingdom, Father. He said, no, it's about your will. On this earth, your concern. On this earth, your intention. On this earth. In fact, even when he's saying, give us this day, he's saying that, Lord, we are the kingdom on this earth, and so you are the one to sustain us. We are imperfect, so Lord, we need your forgiveness. Ah, Lord, the evil one wants to trip us, to deliver us from the evil one. All because of your kingdom and your glory. I want somebody to pray today. You are anointed to pray. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Lord God Almighty, we make our lives all about you because you have anointed us to pray. Lord, your name, your kingdom, your will, we submit our will to your will. Not my will, but your will. Jesus prayed it. Jesus demonstrated it. We are praying, oh Lord. Yes, Lord. Your will, not our will. We are anointed to pray as ones who serve you, as ones who live for you, as ones of other God. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we bless you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And so, Lord, as we have made it all about you, you said you will add all other things. And already we believe, according to Luke chapter 11, that when our children come asking us things, we don't give them scorpions, we don't give them serpents, we give them good gifts. Lord, we receive your spirit. Your spirit as the answer to all things that we've asked you. So that our lives will always be about your interests, your intention, your desire, your will, your concern, and you will take all the glory. The days of insulting your glory are over. Not in this house. We will not be the ones who will show up when they say, bring an anointing oil or uh, we're praying for this, we're praying for... No, 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 Lord. We are always going to be here to pray your will, to hallow your name, to, to, to pray your kingdom to come more and more so that you can get that which you desire. Lord, we will no longer deny the person of Christ. We will call on Lord Jesus because you are rich to those who call upon your name. Lord Jesus, and we will not despise or quench the spirit because it's your spirit by which you have anointed us. We will allow the spirit of the Lord to be, to be ruler, to have the final say, to be preeminent in our lives. Not our will, 
but your will as regulated by your spirit because you have anointed us to pray in Jesus name Amen, Amen.